My name is Alan Rose. I am the uh, deputy uh, test lead for the PORT program. PORT stands for Post Landing Orion Recovery Test. Uh, I work at the Johnson Space Center. What you're looking at here is the Orion crew module. This is going to be the vehicle in the 2015 time frame that's going to be replacing the space shuttle and taking crews to and from the International Space Station. We'll be doing that and, uh, for the first five years and at the same time concurrently we're going to be engineering the equipment necessary for us to return to the moon in the 2020 time frame. Uh, this vehicle that you're looking at is actually a test vehicle. It will not fly. It was built so that we could test all the recovery procedures that we're going to need to do once this vehicle lands in the ocean after, after the missions are complete. Right now we're going to be landing about 200 miles off the coast of San Diego and we'll be recovering this using a, a number of techniques that we're developing actually last week and the, uh, the following week when we go down to the Kennedy Space Center for sea trials. Uh, the, this vehicle weighs right at 18,000 pounds right now. It was built out of three, uh, 316L stainless steel. And one of the reasons that we did that is we want this vehicle to be usable as a test article throughout the life cycle of the Constellation program. Uh, you can see there on the side panels, some of the lower panels have screws in them, and that's there so we can remove those side panels and move tankage around as the design shifts uh, as Orion matures towards a production design. Uh, you can actually see some brass fittings on the, uh, the green portion, which would represent our heat shield. What's that, that is there so that we can drop off the current heat shield mock-up that we have and put on a more representative heat shield if that testing is required. Uh, this was a, a joint partnership between uh, NASA and a number of Department of Defense organizations. What we did there was when the U.S. Navy designs a new ship and needs to know how she'll react in the waves and how she'll react in the water, they go to a place called the Naval Surface Warfare Center, Carterock. And they actually have that division build them a test article and actually go out and test it to find out how that vehicle will react in the waves. We went to the exact same people using that expertise that they already have so that we didn't have to redevelop that expertise in-house. At the same time, we've been working with the United States Air Force, the rescue personnel that they use, uh, they're called para-jumpers, just fantastic group of personnel who actually will be the teams that we're using to test as our rescue teams and we go out there. They're the world's best at rescue and recovery and so far working with those teams has been utterly fantastic. Well, we're going to sea trials the 6th of August down off the coast of uh, uh, the Kennedy Space Center and uh, we, uh, after that testing is complete, we'll be able to put seats, restraints, obstructions inside this and start using it as an ingress-egress tester. This is your crew module. This is where the crew is going to sit for launch and for landing. Um, there will be a, a smaller engine attached beneath this and beneath that there will actually be a large booster. They will actually boost it into lower Earth orbit. Uh, so this is, this is kind of your crew piece where your crew is going to be during the missions. That's the station. For, for the lunar missions, this vehicle that you see behind me will actually be joining up with your lunar lander and your Earth departure stage to kind of act as part of the vehicle. This, uh, this vehicle will remain in orbit around the moon. You'll use the lander to actually land on the surface of the moon. Once done, you'll actually leave the surface of the moon using the ascent portion of your lander join back up with this in orbit and then take this vehicle all the way home. For Mars, uh, we believe that we'll use a vehicle similar to this, but we're not totally positive on how all that work. But it will be a vehicle that we expect to be similar to this, and we'll use it kind of in a similar fashion that we described with the lunar lander, where you'll meet up with a vehicle in orbit around the Earth. You'll then take that joint vehicle all the way to Mars, leaving this vehicle behind me in orbit of Mars. You'll then meet up with it later and then use this vehicle to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere after you return from Mars. Well, uh, on the way to Mars, we actually expect to build a much larger vehicle in orbit so that the crews will have a lot more room. Uh, this is a fantastic vehicle, but it's not necessarily the roomiest, but it does an amazing job at what it's supposed to do in getting crews to and from the station and getting crews to and from their rendezvous with their, their lander equipment in low Earth orbit to go to the moon. So it's, we'll build a lot more room for them to live in on the way to Mars, but this will be their ascent vehicle and their descent vehicle.
we're working with a team uh, just north of here, right next to Great Falls, to actually build this so that we can test the recovery procedures for this spaceship, which is actually going to be the replacement for the space shuttle. We'll be replacing the space shuttle. Um, the space shuttle will be standing down in the 2010-2011 time frame. We'll be replacing it with this vehicle in 2015. This will start by taking us a uh, cruise of six to the space station. It'll then take crews of four to the moon. And also, we expect another crew of four onto Mars in the 2030-2035 time frame. So how does it take off? Is it a yeah, rocket? Is it, it, doesn't like, look like it doesn't really have, like, engines. It is. It, in fact, that's a great point. Right now, all you're looking at is the crewed portion. So you're looking at just the, the vehicle that would re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and splash down wow. in the ocean. The bit that would have all the engines on it, we actually don't have with us right now, but we're going to test it off the coast of Florida into July of this year. So that be definitely be, be looking out for that. It's going to be a really exciting year for us. We're going to have this test going on. We're going to have a test in uh, New Mexico with the, there's actually a small rocket that you put on top of this. And in case there's an emergency, you light that rocket off and it would get you out of harm's way, get you to a, a safe cool. environment. So what's it actually kind of like inside? Are there like um, seats with harnesses or are there any? There will be. Uh, that, we'll have seats with harnesses right now. We just got a bunch of instruments in there. We need to record a whole bunch of data on the tests we're going to run uh, next Monday. Uh, and we'll be in the ocean uh, uh, off the coast of Florida. So how long do you think it would probably take for it to get to the moon? Well, to get to the moon, depending on how you launch, it'll take anywhere between kind of a long two days or four, anywhere between long two and four days. So. It's a bit of a ride. Not if you launch someone to the moon, would they have to stay in there the whole time, or would they have something else to do? Or they They'd actually, there? when they got in, when they got into orbit, they meet up with another vehicle so that they have a little bit more room. That this vehicle, you you never actually land on the moon. You'd only bring this back to Earth. You take a lander that you meet up with in orbit, kind of join up, and then you go to the moon. You would use your lander come back and use this to get home. Probably similar really? to the land that we saw in the museum. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you know, the, the cool thing is, is that by the time we're actually flying this, you're going to be the one flying. So, I mean, by, by the time this this is actually in service, you're going to be the one using it. So, you know, just, just make sure you stay interested, stay motivated. and. Is there a website they could go watch uh, some of this on? Absolutely. If you go to... Uh, www.nasa.gov. I apologize, I'm completely no, out of hand. We can remember out. that. But if you guys go there, um, you're looking for the Orion spacecraft. Orion right. spacecraft, like you, the star, like, constellation. Yeah, exactly. Well, actually, I've been I've been fascinated with the space program since a very young age. I uh, wasn't necessarily the model student in high school, but uh, I uh, I graduated. I, I went to college, became an engineer. Uh, I actually started working with the United States Navy in the submarine field, but. One of the things that, that's always great when, I, when I'm talking to people about education is getting experience and understanding how you can use that experience to benefit you no matter what field you're in. Understanding how to use experience, doing a job, working with people, working with technology to therefore benefit you as if, uh, if you wanted to move into another field. Always wanted to work in space. I started with submarines, not necessarily the, the uh, uh, most direct career path, but it uh, definitely led me, uh, it led me here, and uh, it has been an amazing journey, and uh, I've had a lot of fun doing it.